Hello, I am Cody Allingham, and this is the Transformation of Value podcast. Now, today we talk with my good friend SJF, a British sound artist uh, based in the UK. Uh, I've known SJF for many years. Uh, we first met when I was living in Tokyo, um, and we've collaborated on a, on a, a number of projects together. Um, we did a 12-inch vinyl album record last year, and I did the design and artwork for that, and, and uh, SJF did the ambient music. Now, we uh, talk about a few different concepts here, really focusing on this big one, though, of proof of work, and how Bitcoin thinking can help inspire and direct the way we undertake personal creative practice, whatever that might be. Um, you know, myself being a photographer and artist, uh, SJF being a, a musician, all these different things are able to be, uh, I think, better achieved through a Bitcoin standard and, a, a, a more importantly, Bitcoin thinking. Uh, so we, we cover a few different ideas, um, how lightning and uh, value for value can help support creative people, um, but also how just the general ethos of doing the work uh, can make a huge difference in this world of noise. Uh, and chaos so we dive into a few different topics like that um i do hope you enjoy the episode if you want to support the show please consider supporting uh streaming some sets through your favorite uh, podcasting 2.0 platform um otherwise on to the show how do how do i even start like it was quite a transformative uh, New Year mm. and Christmas period. It was. I spent the whole time like completely by myself. Um, mm. So Christmas and New Year's, I, I was pretty much yeah, just it was just me, and it was the first time in a long time that I've really had the space to uh, think about what what I'm doing uh, at a deep level, and to, and to kind of go through some of the ups and downs of that. Um, it was. I mean, it was quite depressing to be to be honest. Um, it was like feeling quite lonely and um, kind of distant from it. But I, I, reflecting on it, I feel that um, it was kind of what I needed at the time. I was trying to fill the gap, and I, I did meet a few people sort of over the break. But it wasn't mm. sort of a, a festive um, kind of cordial Christmas New Year period. And I, I think, in a way, it would have been a lie to go through like a good old family Christmas like the old days because that's not the world we live in anymore and to just sort of let it go um as if nothing had happened i think that's a defeatist um I, yeah I, I, and there is nuance to that but i don't think that was the right that would have been the right thing for me you know to just sort of ignore it and so i went mm. through quite a, a deep think about well, what's going on in the world what's my role what's my what what do i need to do I did a lot of writing, I did heaps of work on my book, uh, reflected on uh, everything we did together last year, the struggle, and how we both, I think I'm really proud of like how we came through the year, honestly, like it was a pretty tough time, man, you know? Mm. Um, it was. Yeah, it was, it was, um, it was full on, but um, I, I reflected on that, and I, I came out with a couple of, a couple of kind of concepts are not necessarily formalized as four points that I can carry around in my wallet which is cool but um, I mean I've got some sort of you know tasks I guess you could say you know like I'm really keen to push forward with the jujitsu stuff um, maybe do a competition mm -hmm. you know stuff like that but really the bigger idea is <laughs> coming back um, I got here Bushido uh, which sounds a bit funny but like you know coming back to kind of what what it is that is in our strength and kind of res resilience um and and that has a couple of different pieces so like uh, kind of minimizing a little bit uh, it's kind of i go through these phases of expansion of what i'm doing and then also min min minifying mm -hmm. what, what i'm doing and so i'm kind of now coming back to a phase i think of minifying where you know kind of having less and and that that means physically less but also kind of mentally less so i went through a big process um which was really good which was um i don't know if you saw last pass got hacked um it's like pass yeah. Manager. yeah um no i mean not mm. i don't think it was at, at a major risk but um it still got hacked so what i did is i went through my last pass which had like seven or eight 
years of passwords I had saved. And I literally went through every single one and I either logged in and deleted the account or emailed them and said, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I'm requesting that you delete my data that you have on file for stuff that I wasn't using. Or I moved it over to a new password manager, um, mm -hmm. updated the password, updated the email address because I've got heaps of different email addresses just historically. So I did a, a lot of digital cleansing, which was really wow. powerful. Yeah, I really recommend it, man. I moved to uh, Bitwarden, which is like another password uh, manager. But by going through this like digital cleansing, um, cleaning up some old emails and then just deleting them um, and, and old email addresses, old websites that I had, old domain names that I had, just all of this digital stuff, which is kind of like digital digital hoarding. Um, cleaning up my desktop, you know, like stuff like that. Oh, that was like, so that was sort of the new year period. Coming back to this kind of minifying concept. Um, clean up the, you know, cleaning up my digital life. Um, and then I sit here, this is an opportunity to rebuild and reinvent as I've done many times before. Um, embrace it. So looking at kind of the next... The next thing, which is kind of where we're at now, looking at expanding more of my creativity um, and, and focusing on that. I had been quite distracted last year, which is fine. You know, it was sort of understandable, but I was not necessarily focusing on my work as much as I should have. Um, and so we were still very prolific. I think both of us, were, we, we, we did excellent, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't, Oh, I think this year I can do more than I did. And so I really want to focus on that. And I've got a couple other things that I'm really looking to align with um, with my work. So that doesn't necessarily answer your question. That's not nice bullet points. But um, th those are kind of kind of where I'm formulating it. That's kind of the, the yeah, where it's at at the moment. I really like, um, I really like everything you just said. But one thing really sticks out to me, and that's um, digital hoarding which is a fantastic term. I've never, I've never thought about that, but it is something that we're all a little bit guilty of, aren't That's we? A, like uh, yeah. so many email addresses and domain names, like you say, just never Bro, ends MySpace I, pages. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, man. So I went through, because I had yeah, like literally seven or eight years of passwords for stuff mm -hmm. that I hadn't used since like 2016. And um, half of them were got, like the services were gone. They were services that I signed up for, like for one-offs. Um, but what a so there's a there's a bigger piece here which I would like to work work towards in this conversation, which is um, the role of technology in this um, in helping. I think instead of being uh, an antagonist, using technology as a as a positive. And so one one thing, for example, is like I moved from this well have, having a password manager to start with was, was was great. Moving to a new one, which was clean and you know all all. all um, tagged properly and, and all you know all the passwords have been rotated out that's really nice but what what the other great thing about the service that i use is it enables you to do these um, alias emails and so for example and now when i sign up for stuff that's um you know like online if i'm buying something online or some service that i don't expect to really need to use big time um, i can create these like one-off aliases that come to my email address but they're not identifiable to me um, so it's called I think simple login and that that's kind of bundled together with proton mail which I use for my emails and so that was like one piece of technolo technology that I, I'm now sort of deploying and it's it, it's become so natural like when I buy something online or it's just some random website mm -hmm. I generate these aliases and then what it means though is when if they ever try to spam me or anything it goes to this alias email which I can just turn off and it goes to like it <laughs> You know, instead of coming to kind of my wow. my main inbox, which is kind of like a sacred yeah. place, like mm -hmm. you know, it's for emailing friends or you know, like having deep conversations or you know, written written correspondence as opposed to spam. And 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 that for me is like, okay. Well, that really is great because I can kind of delineate anything that's core and anything that's not core. And if it's core, you know, that gets my attention and I can log and I can deal with that. And anything else, it just gets filtered out to this secondary place um, and st starting to be a bit more protective of that space you know it's like if you're in my inbox it's a it's a special place to be 
and and I'm going to mm. give it my full attention, you know, like because we can't get away from it. But if it's beautiful correspondence, then I'm okay with that. But if it's spam, and especially uh, it was really frustrating trying to delete my email accounts for some of these old Japanese sites because they don't have the same spam <laughs> laws, you know, you know what I mean? I, like they, yeah. you, you can't unsubscribe sometimes, so it's like you just have to yeah. nuke it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or they or they make it where you have to, or they'll they'll have an unsubscribe button in the email, but then they'll take you to the website and you have to log in, and you'll forget which email address you use. You don't know the password. You know, it's all of this. Um, I guess that's that's mitigated a little bit when you have a password manager. But I remember before I started using password manager, trying to clean up my digital footprint was just insane just yeah. so difficult but yeah. i really like this idea of alias email addresses is that only like i know that apple just started doing that they called it hide my email but for some reason it works sometimes and it doesn't appear well, other times i'm not sure my that. my so my setup which really works well for me is um so i use proton mail so i went through a process mm. about two years ago to de google my life um, nice and it's it's kind of worked like I still use Google Gmail stuff for more of my work work, but for most of my personal comms, I, I feel like it's really nice to have a different interface and a different setup. Uh, so for for my Cody Cody Allingham emails, it's it's Proton Mail, but now if you subscribe to that, um, they've also got Proton VPN and also Simple Login up bundled with it. And I don't know if that's for the free accounts because I, I pay for my account, but um proton vpn is is really nice that you literally just run it and it, it's just a little thing in, in your you know in, in the mac you know in the top corner with the icons mm-hmm. it just goes mm-hmm. um it's really easy and it's really fast and what it means for me which because where i've been trying to get to is i uh, i've become more and more aware of the importance of privacy and mm-hmm. just and and this will will lead somewhere i promise but kind of these conversations we've been having and, and, and reflecting on last year and just the insanity of, of governments and media and, and everything, I realize now it's like, yeah, I, there's, there's these little things that were a lot more difficult to do maybe a couple of years ago. You know, you kind of had to be more technical, but now things are really like kind of push play, you know, kind of you just, you just get the thing and go, you know, and the VPN just works and you've got all of these countries, you just click the one you want. It's all part of your Proton Mail subscription and it just works and as soon as i've got that it's like i'm now so much more private in what i do online compared to where i was because you're literally open you know open to everybody when you're just browsing normally you know your isp your you know your government everyone's looking at everything you do whereas if you've got these vpns it's like yeah i've got a little bit more privacy and i know that i'm not being watched and I, I think there was this sort of underlying anxiety that it's like, yeah, the, the government is watching, and uh, uh, how's it? Without being, you know, funny about it, it's like, yeah, there, there is this sort of uh, imbalance, which I think we're starting to kind of come back towards a correction on, which is like, yeah, I can actually live a private life and be a private okay. individual, and, and I don't know, just something quite, it feels quite good to know that. Does it work on your phone as well? Yeah, man, there's the a VPN. there's a there's an yeah. app on the phone as well. And you just run it and you just like set it up and forget. And wow. I don't mm-hmm. think it, it probably wouldn't work in China like because you have to change your VPNs mm-hmm. all the time there. But just for general, like, you know, I, I never worry now about, oh, you know, I should, you know, like, because how, how, I don't want to say like it's, it's, it's not really like worry, but it's like I, I know that I'm browsing and it's anonymous. <clears throat> Yeah. you know and yeah. even though i'm just doing normal stuff it you know like it just feels better to not be like plugged into a panopticon <laughs> if you know if you know what i mean and because that's also because yeah. i've stopped using instagram um and I, I mean i still got it but like I, it's just instantly i'm like man I'm, I'm not logged in my cookies are not logged in facebook doesn't know what i'm doing anymore <laughs> that like that that feels really good and in, in a, in a mm. do, do you know what i mean yeah, and it's really interesting that you use the word panopticon because that's a perfect example of the panopticon, right? Like you don't know when you're being watched. You don't know when you're being looked at. And that's the point, right? So your your browser, is the, so a lot of people who um, say, oh, I don't need a VPN because I'm clean. I'm a clean citizen or whatever like that. 
that's what people usually say to dismiss the argument. But it doesn't matter if you think at the moment you're clean. One day you might be doing something that the government suddenly deems is not good anymore. Like, for example, using cryptocurrency or something like that. So, you know, you you never know when they suddenly change their rules and you're suddenly breaking the law and they've suddenly got their eyes on you and then they they've got your whole browser history in front of them thanks to Google and well Microsoft. That's that's sort of leading to where I was I was sort of wanting to get to with this, which is like the other big change that's taken place in my life is my awareness and kind of realization that it's incredibly important for me to focus on Bitcoin this year. And this is something that I've we've kind of talked about a little bit uh, before, but it's not something I've been super public about. It's not something that I've been um, willing to associate my creative work with. Um, I've sort mm-hmm. of been a little bit hesitant uh, for various reasons, but doing a deep dive into the philosophy of, of Bitcoin and what it means looking kind of wrapping up everything that happened in 2022 and just the the insanity of of government and media and just everything that happened and i'm like yeah this this is an opportunity to basically remedy a lot of those systematic failures of of government and just institutions generally that led to this massive um overreach and I feel there's a an opportunity for me to be involved in that and to use my skills in that space um, and to kind of contribute to the knowledge base and sort of reflecting on a lot of our conversations. I, I, I really felt this 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 kind of, uh, you know, th- these ideas that we would discuss around, you know, trying to be creative and prolific and creating beautiful work in, in, in the situation we were in last year. We, we always got to this point where it was like, well, you know, there's a, there's, there is a political angle to it, which you cannot be, um, uh, how would you say, you, you can't just let it slip. You know, you, you can't be apathetic about it. I think a lot of people just sort of gave up and said, well, you know, it is what it is. We can't fight it. We, there's nothing we can do. You might as well give up. Mm-hmm. And I really despised that thinking, which I just saw everywhere around me, because that that sort of defeatism, to me is like well that's that's the end game you're, you're giving up you're letting the boots stand on your neck you know and i've read enough orwell and uh, uh huxley and, and different authors to know that if you give up that's when they get you and mm-hmm. now that i'm thinking in the sense that there is this sort of righteous um technology that can be used alongside all of this other stuff we've just talked about to kind of rebalance the ship and um I've been formulating kind of what what that means, and I've come to this realization that I think Bitcoin really represents one of these many facets of um, action that we can all take to move towards a, basically a better world, um, and more more succinctly, to not let what happened in twenty twenty two ever happen again. Mm-hmm. And what what was it in twenty twenty two that that you you mean exactly? Like the, the second lockdowns we had in New Zealand, mm. the massive repression of knowledge, of information, mm. censorship, the gaslighting at large of of the population, and I mean we've we've been into it, you know, the, the political side. I mean, I was pretty, uh, it's pretty stressful, man, for me, you know, and and for, well, for for both of us, kind of being on the wrong end of that, um, just wanting to live our lives. You know, I I I didn't have any political aspirations prior to that but Mm -hmm. literally i just wanted to be left alone and for it to be shoved down my throat for for so long Mm -hmm. um you know i'm I'm forgiving of it in the sense that of it was a political it was a a systematic problem ultimately the the political you know apparatus wasn't able to deal with the situation and so it did what it always does which is to um you know take over and and to abuse its power um but what so what that says to me is it's like there's there's not a political solution to a political problem what we need is a a technology and a technology a technological solution which is okay if we have this um oh and because because it's not just the the political as well that you know they 
the, we're now dealing with the economic fallout of that with inflation and, and, mm. and um, just all of that, you know, associated pain, which was, as, as, you know, totally unnecessary, you know, I believe. And if we took away the ability to, you know, if, if we were able to take away the ability to, to do that stuff in the first place, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I think we would be a lot better off. And so what is the, what is the technology that we can use to, to kind of circumvent that, if, if that makes sense? Yeah. Why, why do you think that so many people are still against Bitcoin and say, like, you, I still hear it in the media, like just last week, that Bitcoin is used by criminals and drug addicts and, you know, people trying to buy illegal things. I, I don't understand why this um, this idea is still going on. It's a um, oh man, it, it it it's it's deep. It really is. It's a it's a fundamental question of well, one of the fundamental questions is you know what is money, firstly, and it's really mm. hard for people to really understand what that question means. It's taken me years, yeah, and I'm still trying to work it out. But that's where I feel. Again, my my skill set, I guess you could say, you know, I'm not I'm not really a developer or, or anything like that. But what I do do is I read a lot, and I I'm, mm -hmm. I'm considering that the artistic, the philosophical kind of side to it, and you know, reading Plato or rereading Plato, it's like, what is justice? What is money? Mm -hmm. These are the kind of same sorts of questions. And so, going through a dialogue of like, what is money? I think people really don't know what money is. But they've also like money has also changed over millennia, right? So like money used to be exchange of goods that you could, you know, you, you used to be able to exchange shells for a bag of rice or something, or you used to be able to exchange um, a sack of grain for for some chickens, you know, and that was money effectively. Um, so money is constantly evolving, but it's always this sort of shared agreement of that this equals this yeah well the, so where, where i get to which i'm still working on this but the, where i get to is looking at plato he's, he's got this idea of the form so the form the ados is the highest level concept of anything so a triangle for example the highest form of that is the concept of a triangle mathematically what mm -hmm. does it mean uh, you know three corners 180 degrees so, you know some of the corners that's a triangle there's actually nothing in real life that matches that everything if you zoomed in microscopically there's no such thing as a triangle but we're able to map reality onto the highest level abstraction of it which is a uh, you know kind of the innovation there and so what i believe with with money is that the highest level abstraction of money or, or value you could call it is an unattainable concept it's it's mathematical it's it's in the ether right um but what we have in real life in the physical world is we have different kinds of representations of that and some of them are, are better and some of them are worse and you know with with gold or you know classical um kind of barter societies you know there was this kind of physicality this materiality utility to uh different you know different kinds of money but what's happened kind of a anomaly of of history in a sense Every so often you get this period where paper money, fiat, replaces these uh, kind of commodity monies or these um, you know, actual physical uh, uh, hard monies. And so that happens you know, historically. But the, the big difference this time round, because it happened in ancient Rome and, and, and periods of, of war throughout history, but the, the big difference is we've had this digital uh, revolution that's taken place. And so it's not even paper money anymore. You know, Paper money is actually quite quite nice because it's often able to be backed by something else and so it kind of it can kind of work sometimes if you've got a uh, gold backed paper money for example um, which isn't fiat uh, technically but that still works you know and 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 you maybe you go off the gold standard and then you come back onto it you know that that can kind of work from time to time but what we've got now is purely database you know it's it's digital there's there's zero cost uh, to to making more money and it's pretty much like the, the realization is that right now it's come to its end game. And we've got, you know, $1.7 trillion, you know, bills being, you know, the, the, these, the, these uh, you know, coming out of the US, this money is literally just being made out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And it's just mm -hmm. being 
deployed and it's this changing of a database you know moving the numbers around in the spreadsheet is what they say you know the, the, the joke and there's no responsibility to that there's no um connection to reality and it's it was kind of okay for a while and I, it definitely wasn't noticeable to me but it became very noticeable as i sort of you know as many things kind of happen at the same time including the whole covid thing that this is just one big scam and it, it, you know we, we didn't have an alternative to it though before so it's kind of like, well it's a scam but what are you going to do about it but now that there's actually an alternative it's like yes this is something that's worth 100 percent of my attention and that i believe the world is going to be incredibly better off for every single individual if we can move to a world that is at least closer to what bitcoin uh, looks like uh, than what we currently have do you think the skeptics are um very similar to the skeptics that we had at the beginning of the internet or at the beginning of email and stuff like this you know they were just afraid of the new thing and they said oh the internet's not going to last more than 10 years and stuff like this do you think it's the, the same well, thing that we're seeing now it's similar but i think it's it's a lot worse and i think it's a lot worse because the internet was a new a new thing that you could you could kind of ignore and that the so communication was what was disrupted i guess but you it, it wasn't as fundamental i believe as value and so what the the threat that bitcoin represents to the ego you know to the self the threat that it represents is that every conception you've ever had of value gets changed once you understand what bitcoin means as in it's got a fixed supply so your your the value that you create in the world can no longer be debased through inflation and that question i mean that that's taken me years to understand what that really means but people don't really get it because it's such a, a long burn you know it, it's you look back 10 years and you think oh man that money that you know the, the, the salary i had or the money i had it's it's worth so much less than it was at the time but it, it takes so long that it's you don't quite see it you know it's like a slow moving tsunami um so what bitcoin represents for people is it's it's very threatening to their conception because they've been in this kind of mode of of thinking for so long for their entire lives that it's like you're suddenly telling them that the sky's it's not the sky's not blue it's you know it's green uh or it's orange i guess um and 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 people i don't know there's like a gut a, a, a knee-jerk reaction to be like oh i, I reject that like sort of a yeah lack of curiosity mm. which is understandable i guess yeah i think also um it's quite terrifying to learn about bitcoin right you don't a lot of people don't know where to begin and even i took a long time to sort of understand it but um i think when you when you do have something that seems so confusing and so downright difficult to understand then you are just going to dismiss it and i think that's what a lot of people are doing um but i'm yeah like gen generally very or well not very but generally bullish on bitcoin and i do think it's going to to become something um possibly i'm not fully aware of it to, to make me 100 bullish yeah but that's where i hope i can learn more from you to be honest yeah no no well look i, I think that this is so this is the big connection right and I, I feel just kind of reflecting back to what you you messaged me earlier you said like you're you're wanting to become more of a doer more of a maker mm. which i really um i really like this idea that you want to you want to create be authentic and you know, build things and what what has been become very clear to me um and, and again there's a unfortunately there's this, this huge confusion with kind of the crypto space you know crypto with air quotes right and then mm. and bitcoin right and that, that's a, a constant struggle to to delineate those two and and you and i have been through that journey of experimenting and understanding what crypto is and what it isn't and 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 kind of the 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 hype and the lies and the and, and and all of that and and i think it's by going through it and learning firsthand that it's not quite what it, it seems you then realize that there is this 
this nugget of truth within the whole thing, which is, you know, Bitcoin is the answer. But what's really been important to see is, or what's been important for me is realizing how how Bitcoin kind of integrates so well into what I do. Um, like the the last couple of months, or really the last month, I would say, is, is the point where I've really been able to integrate this Bitcoin thinking with what's really important to me, which is my creative work, you know, my personal creative work, which I collaborate with you on as well and many other people. And it's like, it, for a long time, they were kind of two different competing things. But what I've been able to do is integrate them together because if you look at the the kind of values that Bitcoin has at a high level, you know, this idea that you you have to do the work, you know, it's proof of work. You You either have the Bitcoin or you don't. And if you don't have it, you have to do the work to get it. You can't print it out of nothing, and that concept, proof of work. If you if you apply that to your life as an artist, as a creative person, it's like yeah, you got to do the work. You can't just talk about it on Twitter. You can't just you can't you know you can't bullshit. You have to do the work. And you and I, the last year, our conversations have all been about just you know focus, sharpen the knife, do the work. You know, stay focused on what you do, and. I realize like that aligns so well with with Bitcoin thinking as contrasted to fiat thinking, which is like, yeah, you can you can tweet it, you can socialize it, you can do all of the stuff that's not the work, but it's talking about the work. It does it. You sort of yeah, see how that, connecting that those. really resonates. I didn't think about that at all, but trust me, oh, man, to sort of put those two things together. It's amazing. Oh, I can't take credit for it, but like that. So that's kind of one whole whole angle it's like i do the work you know and it's like even in the most harsh repression of you know human rights that i've had in my lifetime and in, in, in 2022 which you know it's it's not globally it wasn't as as bad as say um historical times but it was like certainly it was a shock to be locked in my home by the government mm -hmm. um but even though that happened you and i collaborated to do you know a, a vinyl album I did a photo book, you know, you've, you've done a bunch of music, I've done a bunch of photography, we were still able to do the work and do the proof of work. And it's like, man, that's a testament to it. It's like, well, actually, we're already on a Bitcoin standard in that sense. Like, that's the kind of thinking that we have, which is a response to this kind of just in, insane media culture of just words and sophistry. And again, that's Plato, you know, it's like, man, the sophists, you know, they're all about just bullshit and, and words and talking and empty empty promises whereas the stoics and the 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 bitcoiners it's like yeah we do the work we don't uh, and even your your comment here no uh think before you speak yeah bitcoin doesn't you don't need to say anything you just do you see how i'm sort of connecting that right um so it's yeah. like yeah i don't know man like that started to i was starting to integrate those together and then also looking at the community and so, as you know, I started, a, you know, the Bitcoin podcast and starting to integrate with the community here in New Zealand and globally. And it's like, man, the support that I've received has just been phenomenal. And again, technology enables that. So I do the podcast and people stream sats over the podcast, right? Podcasting 2.0. And I've made, I've made more sats or I guess more, I've been able to receive more value for the work that I'm putting out there in like a couple of episodes of the Bitcoin podcast than I ever got with um, the way we were doing it before. Yeah. You know, with just Spotify and YouTube. Um, because, you know, ultimately they're, they're like gatekeepers for this value. Mm. And, and even Instagram, man, it's like, what is a like even worth? Mm. Like, seriously, like, what well, if you have, a, if you like a photo on Instagram, what does that even mean? Nothing. Nothing. Zero value. But, yeah. but I don't know if you've heard of Nostra. No, so you were, you were talking about this in the group, so yeah, please yeah. tell me. Oh, I mean, that's kind of adjacent to that, but that's kind of Bitcoin thinking manifest, right? It's a, it's a protocol for being able to run anything, uh, relay, relaying messages, but you can build social media on top of it, right? But like one of the core things is like, man, you could you can run social media, but you can also integrate Lightning payments and Bitcoin, and you can, instead of you know, liking, which is, it's just fear thinking. You just click the like button. It's like, no, you, you click the like button, but then you also send, send 10 sats to the person. Mm. So you're kind of putting your money where your mouth is. So the 10 sats come from you. They come from your wallet. 
Yeah, if you want. Uh, I mean, there's different yeah. ways of doing it. Um, there's different implementations, but um, there's other there's other websites like that, like Stacking News and different ones where you instead of upvoting, you're, you're literally just tipping them sats. Mm. And when I saw that happen, because for, 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 for normal people, they're like, oh, well, it's just, it's nothing. It's like 0 0.001 dollars you know or even less than that but it, when you realize that what they are doing is they are now compensating me for the value that i've put out there for writing and i've i've been blown away man like i'm not I, I, i'm an okay writer i'm an okay speaker but i i've had people tip me like ten thousand sats fifty thousand sats mm -hmm. for stuff that i've written i had core developers like a bitcoin core developer tw um you know tip me on stacking news and I was like, man, how many years did I spend on Reddit and Twitter and not get a single dollar? Mm -hmm. And maybe I sold some artwork, but that was like a secondary thing. But in terms of my actual contribution to those platforms, it was like I got no value whatsoever. And what you're talking about with the doer and the maker, and I'd love to hear more about that. Like, you know, is there an opportunity here for you to do and to make, but to also be fully compensated for the value that you're putting into the world? Well, the do a maker thing comes from, um, I guess I've just always, or I haven't ever really been very good at like using my hands. And I don't know, I could like make excuses and say it's because of like bad dexterity or whatever. I don't know, but, um, never been, never been very like able to make something with my hands or it, whenever I've tried before, it's always just been a bit like shoddy or not um not great you know not straight or not not well made or something like that so um i guess back in september um a little bit a little lightning bolt of inspiration hit me and i was just like you know i've been living on the boat for quite a while now and things are always breaking on on the boat and you just have to learn how to fix things you just you know you, it was this kind of bolt of lightning inspiration that made me start to think about painting the boat um and then sort of making it a bit more comfortable like i started building a toolkit and stuff like that which was all which is all great which is all going really well and um i just found that i really enjoyed it really got into it really liked making stuff and kind of getting a bit dirty and you know dirty my hands up and stuff um which is very different from what i you know i've been doing for the last 10 years which is sitting in front of a computer and making music um you know which is all very clean and i don't get a messy t-shirt and i don't have to worry about you know washing my hands afterwards and stuff like that um but funnily enough i actually like that kind of stuff but yeah i think what you were saying is taking that attitude and putting it into more of this sort of bitcoin technology forward focus and thinking right so taking this inspiration and but i don't think there's any harm in doing both i'd love to do both i'd love to be able to make something with wood and write as well yeah yeah well so uh, just to clarify though you're 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 talking about music but you're also coming back to the coffee thing as well like um, and with some of the work you did there with like your your cafe and that like do you, are you feeling like you're wanting to because that's quite hands-on though right like you know making it and ro roasting and yes in a yeah in a yeah making coffee was very hands-on um and it is it is a craft it is a master craft these days you know it's getting a bit of a <laughs> it's getting a bit crazy to be honest but um sort of different from yeah different from that okay or well, just unpacking that a little bit because i'm really excited about that and i think you you because i i remember telling me about the boat and, and how you were trying to do it up like what i would say is the uh the, that kind of bitcoin approach of do the work right proof of work it, it doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with technology and this is a real big thing which i think is emerging now because you get a lot of developer type people who are building stuff on on bitcoin but it's actually like the more exciting area is people who are non-technology people who are using it for things and there's these emerging mm -hmm. um kind of trends of like kind of like farm life kind of farmer life type people who are kind of merging those mm -hmm. two things together and so for example they're maybe 
uh, in the US this is a, a bit more of a thing but they're you know they're doing uh, farming they've got, got cattle and then they're able to sell the meat to bitcoiners you know and and kind of have like an ethical supply chain where it's like grass-fed you know healthy produce from farm to plate and you're able to do it you know pay for bitcoin and get like a kind of like a not like a hello fresh but kind of like you know you get the meat delivered or, or whatever and it's just like, mm. like micro micro community um and and we've kind of got the just a tiny little like proof of concept for that here because there's a guy that i go to that accepts bitcoin in wellington for um for his shop it's like a food cart and so there's this beautiful circular economy where i can get people supporting my podcast and i can go on you know support this guy by buying a coffee or his he does these beautiful like um oyster fritters and things and it's like there's a beautiful little circular economy there that i he and i share and it's i don't know i really value that it's it's like i've i really value what you're doing and i respect what you're doing so we're going to have this connection with this new better kind of money and it's like we're in this club i, I don't know how to fully sort of qualify it but it it kind of works and I'm, I'm just thinking like if you're able to harness that because i think there's a lot of reluctance for people to, to kind of put themselves out there but if you're able to harness that and say well i'm actually doing this um you know i've, I've developed this uh you know wood uh wood turning business um i'm making these new things um you can buy them online here they are you can pay in bitcoin and i'm a bitcoiner like i don't know man i, I it's it's niche but it, it it's uh, yeah, i mean the world is full of niches these days mass media is dead um mm. and it's like these are these are our people kind of thing and I, I just come back to the support that i've had and just the, the amazing people that i've met just in the last couple of months because i i've never had met a real life bitcoiner until like november last year mm. it was always just me on the internet kind of like consuming content and just kind of trying to work it out but then we had this meetup uh, in wellington and it was like man we we just we all clicked we all were on the same page we got people building stuff everyone's like so proactive you know you, you either do or you don't it's it's very like i don't know man it's just like a real different way of doing things which is like completely opposite to just the way the rest of the world is online you know just kind of talking about stuff and and kind of getting outraged mm -hmm. and and all of that it's like yeah but bitcoin is generally like it's like yeah you do the work you know and you got people just building businesses craftsmen like from all walks of life i don't know man it's it's hard to sort of explain but i i can see your work fitting into that really well and there's this sort of like just beautiful i don't know like beautiful crossover where maybe you could you know you could build something or, or you know develop a physical skill like that and then also do your music as well but it actually kind of like makes your music even better you know and it's like it kind of feeds back in and it just creates this positive feedback loop of um good good goodness <laughs> it adds an extra layer yeah, yeah. i have two, i have two questions so first yeah. question is um i'll ask them both because i'll forget otherwise yep. so um the first one is do you think that uh the number of businesses in new zealand and wellington specifically do you think the number of businesses are increasing um, rapidly for, for the businesses who accept Bitcoin and Lightning and stuff like that? And the question two, um, just so I don't forget, uh, is where are you hosting the Bitcoin podcast to be getting the stats from, uh, what is it, Fountain? Fountain, What's it called? yeah. Fountain, yeah. yeah. Okay, so first one. So um, in Wellington, I think there's there's one shop um <laughs> mm. <laughs> and and but but i would qualify that and say look we are in a merchant adoption is like one of the it's is, is a lot further down the track mm. um and that's mm. a whole nother conversation but in terms of like shops accepting it, i mean that's that's a work in progress um and, and I'm, I'm i'm kind of working on that as well with a few other people but um mm. that, that's a little bit further down the track you know we we can't it's it's not inevitable and it it, it needs work for it to happen but the bigger thing is if you go online um you know in terms of people making stuff there is a huge amount of people out there making stuff and accepting bitcoin for payment mm -hmm. so that's 
yeah, it's a little bit different to brick and mortar stores, accepting it in in a place like New Zealand, which already kind of has a payment network. It sucks, but we we have you know systems here. Number two, like so, the way it works with the podcast is it's called Podcasting Two Point Oh, which comes from this bigger concept called value for value which has mm. come out um it was developed uh, recently and it oh it wasn't really developed it was, it was kind of formulated as a concept you know it's like well why why are we not getting compensated as creators you know i've done photography and um i've done thousands of posts on twitter and instagram and i've obviously been able to compensate on selling art books and doing exhibitions and things but that was work that i did anyway like the actual contribution to those platforms was never compensated i didn't get a single mm. cent ever you know and and i'd say it's probably the same for yourself you know i just i didn't have the millions of of subscribers to get advertising revenue and so what value for value says is like well let's just cut that whole thing out let's cut youtube out let's cut uh you know facebook out if your listeners who appreciate what you do like what you do there's no barrier to them supporting you and so they use uh, a podcast in 2.0 apps so for example fountain uh, fountain.fm mm-hmm. but there's many others and they can stream sats to you over the lightning network which i, I sent you some sats last night right you got those mm-hmm. yeah that so that was like instant. yeah it's super quick right so what it, what it is is it's um you got you know bitcoin base you know the base chain lightning's kind of on top of that right and so it enables all of this extra stuff which is quite mind-blowing when you realize how quickly it's moving as well like the i mean the technology is changing every day or it's 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 improving every day but you can you can stream like every second every minute you can stream sats to the other person's wallet so it's like i'm listening to my favorite podcast i'm going to stream 100 sats a minute because i love them and then they just get it and they've got it and it's final and there's no middleman taking their cut on that. And that fundamentally changes the way you you engage with an audience and your relationship with your audience. And I'm like, man, that... Have, and having seen it validated for myself, having done this podcast and like being supported, I'm like, this is the future. And that's going to be a beautiful future. And for your music as well, there's emerging like... Mm. Because I mean, you do like band camp and stuff, but it's kind of like this long-winded process, right? Like you and Spotify in particular. I don't because you you've got like a Spotify Pro account, or yeah, I, how, how I pay um for re- I pay for a middle man um middle you, company you called Record Union. I pay yeah, yeah, and then I can put the music on Spotify. It's crazy, right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Mental. But uh, and, and they're earning money from that, I guess. Yeah, man. So I'm like, man, like that, that's fundamentally broken. And and mm. I just listening to your music, I'm like, this, and I mean this, you know, like you 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 you're a huge inspiration for me. Like you're, I listen to your stuff all the time. I got all of your soundscapes. Um, you know, it's like a whole playlist of mine, and it's like, I'd say, you know, sixty percent of the time I'm listening to SJF. You know, um, and the album we did together. I mean, that was just just beautiful work man and I, you can be so proud of yourself for being able to yeah. you know basically bring an album to life you know 12 inch record and, and we did that together right and but still um we only got compensated for that once we did um we did the album all of the, the stuff we did around that never got we never got anything for right yeah. um and any streams you get any plays on youtube it's like man we're never going to get any revenue from that but if we can develop a niche, which I think we've already got, um, or, or you, you've already got, people can support it and say, man, look, SJF, I love what you're doing. I'm going to support everything you do. And they can do it through Bitcoin Lightning or um, however, um, you know, they can they can stream sats, they can boost it, and that goes straight to you. And I don't know, just the concept of that for me is really exciting. And I feel mm. like it's more artisanal in a way as well. It's like, yeah, you can just do your thing. You don't have to plug into the big, the big tech. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so yeah, invent it and start our own networks. So where where do you actually? Ha- so does Fountain actually host the podcast? Do you upload the files to Fountain? No, no, it's all um, the way podcasting works. I think it's like RSS feeds, right? So I I still I still publish via uh, Spotify Anchor. So I just yeah. have a free account yeah, yeah, and I push it up. Okay. And then 
uh, I, don't, I don't fully understand how it works, but it sort of propagates out. So you can listen, you can still listen to it on Apple Podcast or, okay. or okay. Anchor or, or you know normal places. But if your listeners happen to go through one of these two point, podcasting two point apps, mm. they can decide to contribute and, and support you. Um, nice. And we actually got some support on conversations late at night. Our, you know, our, the other podcast we were doing, like we had people tipping that, and I was like, man, that was the only monetization we ever got was through Fountain, because mm. you never got yeah. any advertising revenue from that, right? Through Spotify. No, nothing. See so, and and it wasn't a huge amount, and I I gave you the stats last night, but it wasn't a huge amount. But we, for me, that's like that's signal. That's the signal that that's what we need to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Yeah. And it really excites me because I, I I don't, I mean, I love what you do and I, I love you and I, I don't want to see a situation where you're sort of disincentivized mm. because we, mm. we, we're we so close and we're kind of onto something with this, you know, and it, it just aligns so well with all of the stuff we've talked about previously where it's like, man, big tech, media, you know, just focusing on your, your work and focusing on, on, on what you do. Like the, this, I don't know, just... It seems to fit together, and I, I, you're starting to see where I'm coming from, eh? Mm. Yeah, I'm enjoying. Yeah. I'm enjoying learning all of this because I'm, I was never. I was very outside of the whole kind of sats and, and fountain, and I think it's all. Is this all like Web 3.0? Is this? Is that what this is? No, no. Is this something else? No, no. So, <laughs> no, no. So, unfortunately, Web 3. Ah, uh, it's uh, that's more of like a crypto. Mm, concept like nft crypto. um mm. yeah that whole that whole thing and like again as i said like it was it was good to go through that and understand what that looks like but every so my conclusion is everything that that promised mm. didn't come true but it's possible with lightning and Bitcoin. yeah yeah it just kind of like the hype fell you know the hype sort of fell over but the Bitcoiners just diligently looked at it and said, okay, what's the best bits we can take from that? How can you, you know, because I think Web3 kind of had some concepts that, you know, were admirable, you know, kind of ownership of, of what you do and and that. But the way they went about it was totally wrong. But we can take that and say, well, actually, we've already got this excellent monetary network called Bitcoin. Mm. What if we just make it so that creators can get, contribute, you know, Con, uh, compensated for their value through that instead of the fiat system which just isn't it isn't just about the money at that point because yeah sure fiat is fiat but that's the fiat thinking that really gets you <laughs> which is okay we've got youtube and we have to have ads and so we have to have content that gets enough views to get enough ads and, and it never makes any money but if you've got what we do which necessarily is niche mm. you know ambient you know beautiful ambient music of cities at night photography of of architecture from you know mega cities all of the stuff that you and i do it's like it's not it's not mainstream and it never will be and so it will never be profitable if we were to take a fiat approach but there's enough people in the world to support both of us doing what we do and to enjoy and have this beautiful relationship with our, our supporters if we can use a system that doesn't follow that paradigm you know there's millions of people who would listen to your work globally and if they all contributed, you know, a couple of sets each, I mean, that adds up pretty quickly. Yeah. You, you sort of see where I'm coming from, but it doesn't work on these mainstream platforms and these kind of centralized things because you ultimately, you know, you're always going to lose to, you know, the 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 um, the mind, uh, was it Minecraft, <laughs> you know, remix uh, teenager, you know, like yeah. the thing that, you know, gets the bazillion views mm. or the or the Justin Bieber you know, you're, you're never going to be able to compete with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, man, I get I get pretty passionate about this, but that that's that's sort of like in a nutshell. That's been my last kind of couple of months is just realizing how this all connects together. That's amazing, man. And that's what yeah. your focus. I can see that you're very laser focused for that for this year. It's really, yeah, yeah. I, I it's got some new gear. Um, you know, podcasting gear and just look like trying to keep abreast of of all of the developments that are going on and and also recognizing my role in this and mm. i guess our role as kind of creatives and philosophers and all of these things which kind of don't necessarily from the outside seem associated with bitcoin you know it's, oh, it's just technology well no it's it is technology but it is also culture and thinking mm. and it even goes so far and this is like a whole rabbit hole but 
when you look at the way architecture was built under the gold standard historically, which is these kind of cathedrals and beautiful, just, you know, Michelangelo type things, mm. compared to fiat architecture, which is cheap, disposable, unsustainable, mm. you realize there's an absolute difference in thinking between hard and you know, hard and soft money. Uh, and that gold standard, which is the best we had historically, is replicate is able to be you know replicated and improved upon under a bitcoin standard because your value mm. isn't going to lose your money isn't going to lose value over time and so you can invest now in bitcoin and bitcoin thinking and it's sure it's volatile in the short term but over time it's not going to go to zero like fiat thinking does mm. and so is there an opportunity for this renaissance kind of off the back of all of the stuff that happened last year globally because man people still haven't quite reconciled i don't think i mean i'm starting to reconcile but man we got we got done done good man last year or in the last couple of years and it's all coming out now what does that mean like what does that look like as people say wait a minute this we can't let this happen again we're gonna move to a world that is a little bit better and it's a little bit more authentic it's based on something solid and a world built on Bitcoin, which is, again, there's a lot of nuance that, that people kind of throw flags up and say, oh, I don't know about that. But what could we, imagine what we could build if you knew that the value that you put in today is not going to lose its value over time. Because we just can't do that today, man. But, you know, you're talking about painting a boat. Why would you do that if you think, oh, well, it's all, eventually the boat's going to sink. Why would you think, why would you even bother painting it? Yeah. You know? Or it's going to get dirty or it's going to flake off or yeah but yeah. if you know that it's like yeah if you just look after it the boat will last you for your entire mm -hmm. life and it's 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 funny you talk you, you live on a boat i mean that's an analogy that's often used is like the fiat is a sinking ship and it's like bitcoin is this lifeboat that you can get off on and i mean it gets it's it's uh it's, it's a series of concepts that you can use and choose pick and choose what you want you can opt into it and and some people just use it as money you know and they leave it there but I think for us as artists, it's like we can really take a lot more from it and we can apply that thinking to our life and kind of, I don't know, it just feels like it's the thing that based on all of the conversations we've had last year that we can we can start aiming towards. Mm, I look forward to it, man. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's great. No, that's great, man. So I think this this is kind of a funny one. It's kind of like we're wrapping up one thing and starting another mm. or for me anyway um so yeah i mean I, I do i would love to collaborate with you again this year um i do have um some dreams of coming and coming to the uk and catching up with you and maybe oh, doing man. some more music and stuff that would be incredible um, yeah and just yeah do some photography and mm. i don't know man I, I feel like it's been too long since we we've caught up in person yeah, I mean, if we think about it, when was the last time? It's like 2019, wasn't it? That's years ago. Two, no, 2020, sorry. Yeah. No, two, bloody hell, maybe it was 2019. It's crazy. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. Um, but look, we might we might wrap it there. Um, it's been a, yeah. it's been great to catch up. I, I feel like, I don't know, we, we, it's been a while and just so much to cover, but it's just, I mean, it's just really good to see, see everything you've done, man, over the last few years. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. The record is great. The record was such a good experience. And like we've been, yeah, I, I always say this, but we've been talking about it for years and we finally yeah. did it. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Take care. Cool, man. Take care.